history as a race between state power and social power. Just as the two basic and mutually exclusive interrelations between men are peaceful cooperation or coercive exploitation, production or predation, so the history of mankind, particularly its economic history, may be considered as a contest between these two principles. On the one hand there is creative productivity, peaceful exchange and cooperation. On the other, coercive dictation and predation over those social relations. Albert J. Nock happily termed these contesting forces social power and state power. Social power is man's power over nature, his cooperative transformation of nature's resources and insight into nature's laws for the benefit of all participating individuals. Social power is the power over nature, the living standards achieved by men in mutual exchange. State power, as we have seen, is the coercive and parasitic seizure of this production, a draining of the fruits of society for the benefit of non-productive, actually anti-productive, rulers. While social power is over nature, state power is power over man. Through history, man's productive and creative forces have, time and again, carved out new ways of transforming nature for man's benefit. These have been the times when social power has spurted ahead of state power and when the degree of state encroachment over society has considerably lessened. But always, after a greater or smaller time lag, the state has moved into these new areas to cripple and confiscate social power once more. If the 17th through 19th centuries were, in many countries of the West, times of accelerating social power and a corollary increase in freedom, peace and material welfare, the 20th century has been primarily an age in which state power has been catching up, with a consequent reversion to slavery, war and destruction. In this century the human race faces once again the virulent reign of the state, of the state now armed with the fruits of man's creative powers, confiscated and perverted to its own aims. The last few centuries were times when men tried to place constitutional and other limits on the state, only to find that such limits, as with all other attempts, have failed. Of all the numerous forms that governments have taken over the centuries, of all the concepts and institutions that have been tried, none has succeeded in keeping the state in check. The problem of the state is evidently as far from solution as ever. Perhaps new paths of inquiry must be explored if the successful final solution of the state question is ever to be attained.